Hi, it's me JD and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be all about the do's and don'ts of ink blending. Ink blending can be used for card making, for scrapbooking, for mixed media, any kind of paper crafts you can think of. Before we begin, be sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll jump right into the tips and tricks of getting a nice smooth blend with your inks. The first do is to work on a surface or mat that is very easy to clean and you can almost glide your blending foam or brush from the surface to your paper. This could be a craft mat like the one I have here. You can use oven liners. I've used that before if you're on a budget. Um, I've also seen glass mats work really well. Just any kind of surface that will not only be easy to clean, but will help you um, transition from surface to project really easily. Another do is to use the right paper. You want a really nice smooth cardstock. My favorite for this is Bristol Smooth Cardstock. It's bright white, it's thick, it can hold a lot of ink, and it's super smooth, and it'll make for a nice blend for your inks. Another do is to use the right tool for blending. I prefer these blending sponges with a round shape. You can also use brushes if you prefer. Brushes will tend to give you a much softer look to your inks. You can also use sponge daubers. I have a collection of these for anytime I'm working with like a stencil or if I want to ink blend in a smaller area. These work great for that. Whatever tool you decide to use, you definitely want to make sure that the end of it is really, really saturated with ink. You can let this build up with time or you can um, just rub some ink on your craft mat and uh, saturate it that way. If you have ever tried to do some ink blending with a fresh sponge, you might notice some spots. And I think that's because your sponge isn't juicy enough. It's like a wet on wet technique. Like you know how you put water on a sponge before you do dishes or you um, put water on your makeup sponge before applying foundation or you put down uh, some Copic markers first before blending your markers, same concept. Another do for improving your ink blending is to practice over a stencil. A stencil will help mask any harsh lines or imperfections while you're improving your technique. Now this is going to start in real time. So when I first like to do some ink blending, I like to load up my sponge, just like a, you know, a dish sponge, load it up, make it nice and juicy, and then bring the sponge to the paper. And in the past, you, you know, usually had to go from the side and work your way in, but Distress Oxide inks are very forgiving and you can pretty much get a nice smooth transition anywhere, especially when working over a stencil. Another do to a nice blend is to use adjacent colors on the color wheel, meaning purple to blue or red to orange. Not saying you can't blend colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel, it'll just be a little more difficult to get a nice transition. When in doubt, just look to the rainbow or follow some of your favorite crafty YouTubers and designers for inspiration. I know my personal favorites are probably Christina Warner has some really great color combinations. Laura Basson always does fabulous rainbow color combinations. As far as ink pads go, I prefer Distress Oxide inks, Distress inks. You can use almost any dye ink too. To ink blend with just some work better than others um, i also like katherine pooler inks and gina k inks for some ink blending and really pretty color combinations as well speaking of ink pads the juicier they are the better my picked raspberry was a little dry so i'm just going to refill it and spill it all over my hands great another do is to have baby wipes on hand at all times Another do for a nice smoother blend is to go back between colors to really uh, blend the colors together. And now for my favorite part of using a stencil, the peel reveal. I don't think I'll ever get tired of doing that part. Another do if you're working with stencils is to clean them up right away or at least soak them in some soapy water. This will increase the longevity of your stencils and supplies and you won't get any transfer surprise <laughs> when you use the stencil the next time. 
Okay, enough Mr. Nice Guy. Let's get to some don'ts. Don't put too much ink on your blending sponge. I mean, that pretty much looks like paint. <laughs> I mean, if that's a look you're going for, go for it. But you, I mean, it'd probably be easier just to take the ink pad straight to paper if you're, you want it that pigmented. If you think you have too much ink on your brush or your sponge, just blot it off on your surface. If you do like how saturated this color is, that's perfectly fine. Uh, just keep in mind that it will take a while to dry as the stress oxide inks kind of sit on top of paper for a while. The next don't is to don't go in with a heavy hand. Now, as you can see, I didn't blot off excess ink and I just went straight to the middle of my project and I'm left with some really ugly, harsh lines. Next up, don't forget your ratio. As in, if you want an even amount of each color ink on your project, then you gotta keep that in mind when you're um, doing your ink blending. As you can see, I put way too much purple in the middle and now I'm trying to bring it back and make it evenly into thirds with between the teal, the purple, and the pink, and it's not happening. Another don't is to don't put your finger <laughs> on the wet ink as you do ink blending. You will leave marks. Another don't is that you don't want to wait too long in between colors because otherwise you won't have enough time to properly blend them. See, I definitely waited too long and now it's going to be darn near impossible to get these colors to blend seamlessly. Let's have another try at that, shall we? First, I'm going to lay down an easy clean craft mat so I can glide my ink over onto my project and look at the position of my arm. I have my elbow on the table. You know the saying, put some elbow grease into it? Well, this way we're taking the elbow grease out of it. By putting your elbow on the table, that will make your wrist do all the work and that will prevent you from having a heavy hand, which leads to harsh lines. And now for my project, I'm also keeping in mind the proper division of color I want. I want this into thirds and I'm going in small circles, trying to glide my ink across the project. And I'm just going a little over that one third line because I'm going to bring in the purple to uh, blend over the pink. Again, not waiting too long before I'm starting. I'm blotting off any excess ink I have and then starting from the surface and dragging that ink onto my project. This process definitely takes time to help build up that color. It also takes a lot of practice too. I mean, my first couple of projects, I either threw away or I like, yeah, just cut pieces out of it or I hit it with some other um, embellishment and then over time you know you get a feel for the tool you get a feel for the ink so you know exactly what motions to use to get the best blend and if you want to protect your project then I definitely recommend getting a little handy dandy tool like this yes I made it myself <laughs> It's just scrap cardstock and painter's tape just to make a little finger protector. That way I don't leave prints all over my project. I'm working that ink in. It's really light, but I'm just, you know, being patient and just building up that color. And as I'm looking at the colors I'm using, it's it, lo it looks okay, but there's something off about it. Like the pink and the teal look great, but the purple is a little off. So another don't is to don't give up. I kept trying to add some more ink thinking that that might help this blend be really smooth and how I want it. Like I said before, I do is to go back in between each color to help blend the edges and smooth out all of those edges, but it's still not working for me. Um, something's, something's off. That's when I decided to bring in another purple that's similar tone and brightness to the pink and the teal. So I brought in, what is this color? I think it's Wilted Violet and I was previously using See This Preserves. And I think with the similar tone and brightness that this color has with the other colors, it made for a much brighter blend. It means like, it's like the color story made sense now. 
I love that with Distress Oxide inks, you can layer the inks. So even putting uh, another ink color on top of my previous ink color does not affect my project at all. It probably made it better because number one, I have a quote unquote wet surface to work with now and, and the color is even more saturated. Same process as before, I'm going back and forth between colors to make sure the edges are nice and smooth. Again, you want to protect your fingers and your project basically from each other and use some kind of uh, like tool like this, I guess you would call it. Although I have to say I am guilty of being lazy and not using it. But uh, just for the most part, it's better to protect your fingers if you're a klutz like me. And now for the comparison, you can easily see what to do and what not to do when it comes to ink blending. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this process and make sure to stick around for the next video.